Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to this live session organized by LE Publishing. Uh, thanks for being here. My name is Silvia and I'm here just to uh, provide you with some technical but important information. So I've got a list here with me. So first of all, um, you will find um, the questions box where you can actually write down your questions uh, or any technical issues you might have during this webinar. Uh, by the way, we will try to leave at, for the end of the session the questions and answers time. Uh, then, um, just remember, you can download the PDF format of the presentation, kindly, you know, uh, available thanks to our, our speaker. Just remember, you, you just need to go on, uh, on the documents or handouts or uh, just follow the announcement if you're following this session through your mobile phone and just press on the um, sheet icon and download the file. Just remember to do it before the end of the session, okay? Then this event will be recorded, of course, so no worries if you know any of your friends couldn't make it for this afternoon. Uh, I will upload it, uh, let's say, in the next couple of, you know, well, let, let's, I, I can't promise you a date, but you know, let's say in a week time, I will upload it on our website, anyonline.com slash webinar. Then last but not least, because I know it's really important for you, you will, will all receive the certificate of attendance directly in your mailbox uh, by tomorrow evening, basically. So just check, just remember to check your mailbox tomorrow um, or you know, in two days time and checking the folder in the spam folder because sometimes the go-to webinar mails just go there, I'm afraid. Uh, right, okay, so I think, Okay, I think that's all. I just wanted to, uh, you know, to remind you and to show you our beautiful brand new, you know, 2021 catalog, e English language teaching catalog, and it's causing, let's say it's causing the English language games catalog. Uh, just remember, you can go on our website to browse them, to flip through the, 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 the PDF files or just download them. But now, uh, thanks for your patience. I'm very happy now to introduce you to our, you know, guest uh, speaker. Well, it's not a guest because you can see him. <laughs> it's Paolo Iotti. Paolo is uh, directly from Italy. He's, um, he's living in the center of Italy in, um, in the region of um, Emilia Romagna. He's a teacher of English, of course. He's also a teacher trainer. And he also is also author um, of ELT materials and courses. So, Paolo, thanks a lot for being here and um you know it's now over to you thank you thank you very much sylvia and thank you uh, all of you thank you for your introduction i hope you have a good time with me today and uh, i'll be uh, willing to read your uh, comments your ideas anything you want to share with me and with the rest of the group please write down uh, uh, your questions and by the end of the session we will try to uh, answer together and see uh, what we can do. Now, the usage of card games in the language classroom. This is the topic of today's conversation. Uh, okay, let me just see if this works properly. Okay. Right. We can see your presentation. Yes, and I, I hope you like the colors because I'm trying to uh, change it and go on slide two. Ah, fantastic. Who were your favorite teachers? This is the question I would like to start with. Who were your favorite teachers? Because yes, Sylvia said I'm a teacher. And if I'm a teacher, basically is because I had the chance uh, the opportunity to meet extraordinary teachers. And here are some of them. Uh, these teachers uh, are those who not only taught me things of values, but inspired me as well. Quite possibly, they inspired me to become a teacher. As I said, if I'm a teacher today, it's because I had the opportunity to meet these extraordinary people. Now, the same question, I handle this question out to you who were your favorite teachers please think about them think about them and what do they all have in common 
think about your favorite teachers and think about what do they all have in common. If I think about my list of favorite teachers, what they have in common is that they all loved what they were doing and that, yes, they had great enthusiasm for teaching. Now, this is one of the key words of today's presentation, enthusiasm for teaching. Uh, yes, enthusiasm and, yes, my favorite teachers. And here, mentally, you can add your favorite teachers here. Think about them while I'm talking about mine. You please think about yours. Uh, Yes, the second word is fun. Favorite teachers, enthusiasm and fun. Yes, because good teachers, along with working very hard, almost always have fun. Well, of course, I'm not saying, I'm not claiming that every single day in the classroom is going to be a sunshine and smiling faces. But what I'm saying is that you, I mean, we teachers, we increase the chances of teaching effectively and having cooperative students every time we have this kind of approach, matching enthusiasm and fun. This is not only theory. This is honestly what's, uh, what I would like to live every day when I go to school and teach. And this is my real aim in this kind of presentation is to share with you and to grasp from you enthusiasm for our activities yes and what's the great news the great news is that in order to establish enthusiasm and fun in order to increase enthusiasm and fun in our way of teaching yes uh, the great news is that card games for language teaching can help us provide both enthusiasm and fun they involve students with similar goals and oh yes above all they are entertaining and here you can see two slides i mean two pictures two photographs of two different aspects of our teaching life the first one is the picture that i took a couple of years ago well before the covid 19 uh, time and i had students playing with cards in my english classroom and the second picture of course is a very recent photograph with some students uh, I'm playing with them online card games, and of course, they are following their lessons uh, online. Yes, because these games, and we are, talk we, are, we are going to talk about these games today together, can be used both uh, during our live lessons and online lessons. Ah, let's have a look at the content uh, of this presentation. I said my aim is both uh, offering you and grasping from you enthusiasm for our way of teaching. The content in details is this. How to use card games? Well, some cards game. Of course, I wish I had the time to present you more card games, but we will discover three, four card games. And uh, I hope I will give you more ideas uh, by using these games. And second, second, second question, why are card games so effective? We're going to talk about this later on. And I will share with you some useful cross language, some useful tips, and we will talk about how to choose the right game for the right students in the right situation. And then we will try to explore some social aspects of uh, using games and in particular card games. Now, uh, these six lines basically are the content of this presentation. And so bearing in mind that enthusiasm is the frame of our presentation, let's enter in details these six points. And I'd like to start uh, the presentation by sharing with you the experience of one game is here, the verb bingo. Of course, you can have these games uh, at the end of the presentation. You will find all the details in order to get these games if you want. Right, verb bingo. It's a double-sided picture word card. There's a set of cards, as you can see. Double side bingo cards with words in here and pictures in here. 
clear imagery, self-explanatory competitive games, plural, not just one game, not just bingo. 66 verbs to explore and use. And of course, this game is suitable for various levels, from the very beginners to more advanced students. The game can be adapted from infinitives to conjugation by the caller, by the teacher. The audio and visual combination is challenging, enjoyable, and makes it memorable. There are, as I said, several games. Of course, you can play bingo by uh, giving your students a card. It is possible. Yes, I know what you're thinking about. Is it possible to play bingo during online lessons? Yes, it is. And I will show you how to do it in a minute. Right. But let's have a look at the content of the box now. As I said, pictures with uh, cards, with pictures and words. And how can we play it? Of course, the teacher calls out, uh, pick up a card from the deck and calls out the name. In this case, is eat, as you can see. You can either show the picture or the words and students have to cover the picture or the words according to what is your teaching aim you can either ask your students to use this side of the card or the other side of the card and so that they can develop their listening ability their reading ability their comprehension and of course have fun but as i said this box is not only one game it's a set of games believe me endless possibilities endless possibilities uh, i wrote here some uh, games that i played and i actually play with my students uh, give me the card or mystery action or funny stories uh, let us say give me the card my students like this kind of uh, game a lot give me the card each player each player picks up a card one of these cards here, uh, picture side up, without reading the word on the back of the card, he or she has to pronounce the verb out loud. Then he can turn the card over, and if he or she gets the right uh, verb, the right action, he can keep the card. Otherwise, he puts it back on the pile, and the next player continues. Whoever collects the most cards win the game uh, or another game that my students like a lot is funny stories i give a card to a group of four or five students and they have to create a story a funny story using all of these six actions now what comes out sometimes is absolutely amazing if you've ever tried if you've never tried this game before please try it give your students a card like this with six actions not necessarily connected and help them and ask them to create a story you will be surprised to see their level of energy their level of you know they can be incredibly creative and all this starts from a bingo card right so yes of course you buy this game or you find this game and you say yes we can play bingo you can play several several games with this card of course remember that your double side bingo cards can be as effectively used for online lessons as well yes and one of the ways i uh, use these uh, cards over the last weeks actually very recently is this i scanned and i downloaded the cards, these cards, on the class drive. Each student uh, prints a card. If each student, as you can see in uh, this picture, each student has their own card, and we played bingo online. Okay, it took about 25 30 minutes to scan and upload in the class drive these cards. Okay, maybe you can say 20 minutes. 25 minutes wasted, but uh, I would say I invested these times, uh, these 25 minutes, these 30 minutes, because once you've got your uh, cards scanned, then you can use them with one class, 
two classes, three classes, four classes. So the effort and the time you put in preparing one lesson can be easily recycled. Okay, why are card games so effective? If you have any questions, by the way, so far, please write it down. And by the end of the presentation, uh, I will see what I can do with your questions and your ideas that you would like to share, perhaps. Or if you have different experience, please do share with the rest of the group. Why are card games so effective? Well, these are some of uh, the, the, the answers that I personally find relevant from my point of view, from my experience. But please feel free to add your own ideas. Why are card games so effective? First of all, they reflect the needs, the real needs of the class. Playing and feeling part of a group is a real need for very young learners in particular, but I would say for learners in general. And they have, card games, linguistic relevance. Uh, they mirror the contents of course books. So no matter the, what course book you're using at the moment, you can easily match card games with uh, your course books. And they have ongoing relevance. Why? Because they provide variety, they broadening focus, they give a sense of progress and achievement. Let me say it in another way. I mean, in other, in other words, when students play card games, most of the time, they forget they are studying a language. They play in English for the pleasure of playing. And this is certainly something that we teachers want to achieve with our students. They forget they are studying, they live the pleasure or the enthusiasm, as we said at the beginning of the presentation, of living their lessons, of learning, the enthusiasm of learning. Um, yes, card games build positive attitudes in the class for both students and teachers. I have to admit, uh, most of the time, I have a very good time. I enjoy myself very much when I play card games with my students. And, you know, when at the end of the hour, uh, students say, wow, the lesson is over. I mean, is, is, is the lesson over? Is it time to finish the lesson now? And they are sad because the lesson is over. It means that the material you've been using so far is in fact a very good material. Uh, yes, they, uh, card games build positive attitudes in the class, as I said, both for students and teachers, especially when used to celebrate achievement. Uh, and by this, I mean, at the end of a unit, uh, unit two of the course book, we finish unit two, then we have the test, written test, oral test. Wow, fantastic. Before we start unit three, it's game day, game time. Uh, we celebrate the achievement, we celebrate the fact that we finished unit two before we start unit three with um, a lesson, a full lesson of games. Uh, of course, we are not wasting time. We are underlining and reinforcing what students have been learning so far by playing card games. And this is perceived as a celebration, a celebration of an, of an achievement. Example number two, by the way, if you have questions, again, please write them down. Example number two, the busy dominoes. Mm, I like this. It's one of my favorites, actually. Not my favorite, not number one. I'll give you a minute what is my favorite, but this is certainly one of my favorites. The busy day dominoes. I think you all can play dominoes. It's a self-explaining game. But, okay, let us have a look at the content. It's based on uh, a day in the life of Granny Fixit. Granny Fixit is a character from a fun series of early readers booklets. Uh, there are 48 domino pictures, sentence car with non conjugated verbs written in brackets. And the first domino, as you can see, is easily identified by the red border signals the beginning of the day because yes it's the old day the old daily routine are reported on these cards students play clockwise and look for their 
either the picture described by the previous sentence going forwards or looking for the sentence which describes the picture of the domino on the table going backwards. In other words, if we start by playing this red card that you can see on the screen, of course, if you play forwards, you need a card with a picture matching granny fix it and then wake up. And of course, the card is this. As you can see, granny fix it is in fact waking up in this picture. And if you go uh, backwards, you need not a picture, but a, a written sentence or written words, not the proper sentence, the alarm clock, and then the verb ring, because what you can see in the picture is in fact an alarm clock ringing. Now, 48 cards to play domino, and again, endless possibilities, both online and uh, during live lessons with the children. I mean, I say children because I teach very young learners mainly, but of course, uh, I, I've used these dominoes cards with adults and they work. No problem about it, no doubt about it. Okay. Each student can put only, can put down only one domino at a time and only if the sentence they say is correct. If they say, the verb incorrectly, aha, they cannot put the card down, they have to keep it and use it for the next time. Distant learning, distance learning uh, ideas, as I said, all the domino cards uh, can also be used in alternative ways during online classes. Example, example, this is an example that I actually did very recently with my students, show the picture part of a card like this, the picture part only, and ask the students in pair, in pairs or in groups of three to write a sentence to go with the picture on the online platform chat or alternatively show the sentence with the verb in the infinitive and ask the students to say the sentence or to write it down with the verb correctly conjugated online it's a bit of it could be a bit messy but if you are if they all speak and talk at the same time but if you ask your students to write on the chat then yes it becomes uh, not only uh, possible but uh, it's you know it's a way that works i've tried it believe me it works it's another way of using the same game the bingo dominoes, I mean, the dominoes uh, cards in a way that is not exactly the, but it helps a lot. Uh, of course, when you play cards, you can introduce a lot of language, a lot of useful language while playing. Uh, don't feel shy never think, oh, I can't use that word, I can't use that sentence, because I haven't introduced it yet to my students. No problem, just feel free to use the language you like. Increase your speed when you talk uh, to your students and play card games, because the cards uh, are such a powerful tool that when students play, most of the times I said they forget they are studying a the language they want to play for the pleasure of playing, winning, and having a great time. Uh, anyway, here are some of the words that not only you teachers, but the students are kindly requested to use. Uh, let's start, or it's your turn. It's my turn. No, 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 it's his turn. It's her turn. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Hey, pass. Pass, I haven't got the card, pass. That's good, very good, that's right. Who's next? No, not that card. Again, I could go on and on, but what I'm saying is do not feel shy. Don't be afraid, use your classroom language ah, at your own content. 
and you will be uh, you will be amazed you know to find out and to discover the so-called passive language that your students can grasp uh, during uh, a session of card games i said so-called passive language uh, i know that the uh, collocation passive language is used quite a lot i don't particularly like it there's nothing passive in understanding a language uh, it's not a passive listening no no it's a, a different way of being active it's an active way of listening and understanding without translating into the native language so please feel free to use your uh, classroom language while playing card games with your students and uh, if you have an experience that you want to share with the rest of the group please again feel free to do it uh, we're all teachers and we all benefit from uh, sharing each other ideas. Okay, now on to some useful tips that, yes, these are tips uh, that I wrote down thinking of this game, thinking of this busy domino, domino game, but can be actually recycled these tips to many other card games. The picture you can see here was taken before the COVID-19 in uh, my English class in the primary school that I teach here in Scandiano, pardon, Castellarano at the moment, Castellarano uh, in the province of Reggio Emilia, uh, as Silvia said, in the center north of Italy in the region of Emilia Romagna, and this is actually the real uh, class. I have uh, a room in my school when, you know, when students enter this class, they can talk, uh, they are requested to talk in English only, and we only use English within these four walls. This is psychologically speaking, is very, very relevant. It forces me to use my English uh, nearly 100% of the time, and it forces the students to, uh, put their effort to give their best in order both to understand and make themselves expressed in English. Uh, if you haven't got a room in which you can establish this rule, you might, if you have very young learners, either put a hat on or uh, a bag or whatever, a sign, um, a scarf or whatever, with signs that you are using your English and you ask your students to do exactly the same English time Anyway, there are, as I said, in this game, 48 cards. Divide the cards by the number of students in each group. Please keep some cards for you. Use the excess cards to illustrate how to play the game. Now, this is a key tip. This is a key tip. Do not divide of this game but other games as well do not divide cards the cards uh, thinking the exact number of your students keep some cards for you for example with a group of 21 students you could have three groups of seven students in the picture you can see something like this you could have three groups of seven students each student is dealt six dominoes leaving six cards to explain how the game works. If you have six cards, you the teacher, and you have six cards to explain how the game works, you don't need to explain the game in the student's native language. Those who don't understand the rules of the game, while you're explaining it for the first time, they might grasp it when you play with the second or the third card or the fourth card or the fifth by the end of the, the sixth card believe me 99.9 percent .9 of your students have certainly understood the game you have no problem there's no need to explain the game in their native language anymore because with not one not two not three but six examples wow no problem students don't need the translation in their native language. And this, psychologically speaking, is an incredibly strong 
uh, tool. It's a powerful tool because what they grasp, what the students understand is that yes, they can understand more than what they say, than what they can say. Hmm? Second set of tips, again, take, taken directly from my English class. If a student has only one domino left to play, he or she must knock on the table to alert other players that he, she could finish next turn. Group of eight students, maximum, maximum eight students are advisable as they have more cards to play, maintaining interests level. Ah, talking about this, very often your students will say, can we play it again? Could we play it again? Once more, please. Please, I tend to say, not this time, next time. In other words, my advice is stop playing when you feel your students would like to play again. So, first of all, they don't get bored. Second, they will be looking for the next lesson because they know there would be something enjoyable for them to look for for them in, in, in the next lesson. And this is, uh, you know, a, a tip that I'm glad to share with you, both about card games and songs. I actually use a lot of songs with my students. You might find some of them on YouTube. If you write Paolo Yotti, Sing uh, to Learn, you will see some songs, not all of them, but some of the songs that I've recently devised for my students. And yes, we sing a lot as we play a lot with card games, but I stop playing card games and I stop singing with them when they still would like to carry on singing and to carry on playing. Anyway, please uh, have a look at YouTube, uh, write my name, listen to some songs, and please uh, give me your feedback. Oh, by the way, feel free to use those songs with your kids. Uh, they are copyright protected, but please feel free to use them because we both, I mean, me, you, we're all teachers and it's a common ground that we share. So if we have materials and ideas, let us feel free to share within us and get the best out of it. Okay, let us have a quick look on how to choose the right game for uh, our students. Okay, sip of tea, oh. with milk, of course, but no biscuits this time. Uh, how to choose the right game. Yes, it's important to understand the focus of the game when choosing them. In other words, is it a communicative game? Is it a linguistic game? Is it a grammar game? A competitive game? A cooperative game? Okay, communicative games are usually distinct from linguistic games, I mean from grammar games. That is the activity, activities may have a non-linguistic uh, or goal or aim. Therefore, fluency is more important than accuracy. In communicative games, when my students play this kind of games, if they make mistake, mistakes, no problem. I write down what they say, I write down their mistakes, uh, I write down who uh, has a particular mistake, and not certainly while they are playing, but at the end of the game or in the next lesson, I go back to the mistakes, not okay, okay, uh, I hope it works. The, Sylvia, does it, is everything working at the moment? Uh, yeah, actually, I wanted to yeah to uh, to let you know that we had just a few seconds where we lost you. 
now okay, we are with us, but I can see there are some moments where we we can actually we actually lose you. Okay, uh, only recently, or I mean, only on this slide, or in other slides yeah. as well. Well, mainly, mainly, mainly on this on this slide. I see, I see, I see. Well, let me go back to it. I don't know if you were connected. I mean, if I was connected actually, when I was saying that uh the uh i tend to write down my students mistakes and they go back to the mistakes at the end of the game or in the next lesson because i certainly don't want to uh stop the fluency of the language uh it would be not certainly the best thing to do uh, when i find that my students are free feel free to communicate in english while playing if the uh, accuracy is not a hundred percent correct no problem uh there will be time and a moment in which i'll go back to their mistakes and check and correct their mistakes it is necessary also to identify the difference between competitive games as opposed to cooperative games and mm, it really depends on the class you're working with now in one of my classes class 3a by the way uh, class 3a my students are about eight nine years old in that class uh, competitive games at this moment mm, they're not certainly the right uh, element to introduce in the class they need to learn how to cooperate rather than uh, find out who's the winner and who's the loser so uh, when you choose a game, please think of the specific class you are working with and the specific needs on, of this class in this particular moment. Uh, I hope by the end of the school year, I will be able to use competitive games with my class 3A. At the moment, no, I can't. And I'll go to cooperative games. With other classes, Competitive games are exactly what you need in order to ask your students to give 100%, I mean, 110% more uh, of their uh, natural attitude towards learning. So it really depends on the uh, students you're working with. But please bear in mind that there are games designed and devised to be more uh, cooperative and some other games devised to be more competitive. And when you choose the games, please think about them think about it. An understanding of students' particular learning abilities can help in the choice of the game. Opportunity of TPR, cross-curricular activity, cultural activity, etc., etc. Uh, in, in other words, games are powerful. They can be used both to uh, study grammar, to study accuracy, to study and to practice fluency, to increase the level of competition and to increase the level of cooperation. Depending on the class, depending on the game, you will find out uh, the best, you will get the best out of your games. Uh, right, it's high time to go to example number three, great verb game. And this, yes, believe me, this is my favorite. Definitely, yes. Uh, I've been using it for a long time never, never used it twice in the same way. Uh, the word uh, endless possibility is literal, endless possibilities. Yes, the great verb game content. There are a hundred pictorial verb cards. As you can see here, 21 cards uh, and they are blue, okay? 100 pictorial verb cards in blue back then there are green cards 21 cards with subjects they are green as you can see you or they or a group of tourists or the smiths or my brother my sisters so subjects 21 cards with subjects and eight verb tense card and they are yellow in this case conditional 
no worries, we have the present simple as well. You don't have to start with the conditional. Past simple, uh, present simple, present continuous, and so on in yellow, yes. And three grammar formulas in red. Uh, affirmative form, interrogative form, and negative form. Uh, you are all teachers. I'm sure there's no need, you know, to me to go in details. I will. I will because I want to. But I'm sure that many of you, simply by listening to my presentation of the content, are thinking about on how to use this powerful tool with your students. The great verb came. Use. As I said, endless possibilities from verb conjugation to miming to story building. The card game, this card game is suitable for all levels and in distance learning, thanks to its structure. This game is also excellent during distance learning situations. Only the teacher actually handles the card. The players see the cards and have to conjugate the verb or to create stories or to uh, find out before the others the uh, the game i mean the word itself one of the games that my students last like is called hey, hey listen is called trip tease now the point is when you go home i mean when your students go home and say uh, we played strip tease at school with the teacher of english it can be a bit of a problem but this is what I mean by striptease. You have a card here, right? You cover the card like this, and you show the card bit by bit. Dun, 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 dun. Striptease, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more. And those who uh, identify the verb, they are the winners. And I mean, they, because they play it very often in group, okay? and they can win the card and in order to win the card they have to say the verb or they have to make a sentence using the verb or they have to make a question using the verb and so on okay maybe you want to play it yes let's play strip tease together Ooh, i hope no one takes this part of the presentation out of the context or i hope my career will finish right now anyway let's play strip tease together yes good look let's see if you can find the verb Silvia, can you see the card in uh, on the screen yes yes we can see it okay. yes you can see it. Uh, okay. Can you see the card? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Strip tease, bit by bit. Can you identify the card? Can the you maker? identify the action? Da -da -da. What? <laughs> what? Uh, here are. Uh, Cinder, what do you think it is? Well, I was just saying, you know, like, a, you know, a, um, a baker or someone was cooking yes <laughs> yes but the verb in this case is to cut uh, yes as you can see cut so you didn't win this time no problem oh Stay tuned and you'll be playing to win next time with us Ta -da! you I see will. with a card we can turn the lesson into a tv show and stay with us and we play with the next card what is it Ta -da! Ta -da! The, the music in every single quiz show we have the music Da -da -da, da -da -da. Oh, yes, this card. Mm. Can you find it out? This is an, an online distance learning way of using the same game. Can you find it out? What is it? Okay, this time I will be happy to read some of the, um, you know, suggestions from, yes, from good. our teachers. Read yeah? it. Let's okay. play online striptease all together <laughs> then. You see, yeah, I, I said to myself at the beginning of the presentation, I said to myself, Wow, these teachers, they don't know me, right? So they might think I'm a serious person. I will try to be as serious as possible, as <laughs> professional as possible. We are by the end of the presentation and I, I didn't manage. I mean, I couldn't manage. I slipped <laughs> over into my internet, I'm afraid. Yes, anyway, let's do it.
I have what already got two, two answers. So the first one is, okay, the verb is to turn on the light. The second one is to read. Turn on the light? To read. I will accept turn on the light. Although mm -hmm. the verb is switch on, but turn on the light, yes. yes. What's the name of the person who said turn on the light? Turn on the light is, uh, pardon me, sorry for my pronunciation. She is uh, Moika Kajan. And she is from? Um, let's see whether she can write it down for us. Please, Monica, let us say where you are writing from. Yeah, it's okay. Mo Moika Kajan. I'm sorry, I cannot. Ah, Moika, yeah. Moika, Moika. Sorry about that. Well, well, she's not, she's not writing. Maybe let's just go. Um... Ah, yeah, anyway. sorry. From Slovenia, from Slovenia. Sorry. Thank you, From Moika. Slovenia. Wow, yeah. great. Well done, well done, well done. And here is a music for you, just to celebrate your victory. Ah, it doesn't work. Okay, this is for you. <laughs> for you to Slovenia. Thank you for your cooperation. Congratulations. Moika. Congratulations on your success. Very good. Sorry, 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 Sylvia. I said to myself, I want to keep it serious, but never mind. Okay, let's go on and let us have a look about the, the social aspects of card games. Uh, material management can be an important social aspect. Looking after the cards, they should be returned in the same condition they were given out which makes not only an individual responsibility, but a responsibility of the class as a whole. If you want to play next time, fine, good. Take care of the cards. It's not my responsibility as a teacher. It's not an individual responsibility. It's a responsibility of the class as a whole. My tip in order to keep the cards uh, available for years, actually, please, Ah, count the cards before distributing them and get the students to count them and before you, they give them back. And please keep the cards in boxes rather than envelopes. This seems to be a marginal tip. Believe me, it's vital. If you want to keep your cards for years and years, keep them into boxes rather than envelopes. And of course, talking about social aspects, I lost the game. <laughs> and life goes on. This is what I'm trying to teach in my class 3A. Yes, Ricardo, you lost the game and your life goes on. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, yes, Samantha, you can say I won. You can say I'm happy, but you don't need to make fun of your classmates who didn't win. Uh, it might be not that relevant, but yes, in my experience, those two points uh, I lost the game and life goes on and I'm one, I'm happy, but I don't need to make fun of my classmates. These are very, very important social aspects of playing games. Now, we are about to reach the end of the presentation. Uh, it's 10 to 6, so I think we have some time to uh, read some questions. Uh, please write down these web this website, www alielanguagegames.com and you will find uh, this information and more info uh, and more ideas. Ah, by the way, on the website, you will find the uh, a digital uh, version of these uh, brochures, booklets, with plenty of ideas on how to use these games. There's a, a booklet like this in each box with uh, many ideas on how to use each game. Okay, remember the catalog, language games catalog, and some more games. I wish I had the time to introduce you to these games. They are absolutely fantastic. Please take a closer look to these games. Of this set, I would like to point out the uh, Tribu game, absolutely amazing. Okay, 
some pictures taken from my life that I'm pleased to share with you. Games are synonymous to enjoyment, both uh, during live lessons, as you can see in some pictures, during online lessons, as you can see in another picture there, or during uh, something in between uh, live lesson and online lesson, that is the last picture. I mean, the picture you can see on your right is my class 5A at the beginning of this school year with students in their desks uh, divided, yes, not in groups, uh, and uh, with their masks on. This is the situation at the moment in Italy, and we'll try to make the best out of this situation anyway. Uh, that's it for now. Please contact international at online.com, Facebook, have a look at Ellie Publishing, and register for free on the website of alienline.com to receive updates on our future events and access to resources for your online lessons. So far, thank you very much. And please, Sylvia, uh, I'll be pleased to listen to some questions and to some, not only necessarily questions, I mean, ideas that teachers would like to share. And thank you for being here with me today. Thank you, wow. <laughs> Sylvia, thank you, it was you a now. pleasure. Thank you, it has been a pleasure, real pleasure. So, first of all, uh, if you like, you know, uh, not to share anymore your screen. Oh, yes, sure. So then we can actually see you properly. Oh, no. <laughs> Are you sure you want to see me properly? <laughs> okay, let's go to the zoo then, to the zoo then, so that you, you can see me properly, right. Is okay, it okay now? You. Yes, perfect. Any better? So, that's okay. good. So I've got here uh, a few questions for you. Please go. <clears throat> so the first one is, so this is quite a general one. How many students can play the game at the same time? I guess it depends on the game as well. It depends on the game. Uh, it depends on the relationship of the students within the class. But uh, I tend to play with the old class, so 21, 25, up to 27. I have a class of 27 students, so up to 27 students, you can play games in group. The point is, you as a teacher, I mean me in this case, but we teachers have to divide the groups in order to have uh, in each group some leaders and some people who need a leader to be involved, if you get what I mean. So uh, it really depends on the way you divide your students, but the old class is my first answer. Okay, thank you. Next one then. So, uh, when learners, especially very young learners, play games in class, they can be very noisy. So, how do you handle classy uh, noise? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for this question. Yes, they can be very noisy. Uh, but in my experience, I have white hair, you see, so I have a bit of experience. In my experience, uh, there are two kinds of being noise, two kinds of noises. One is because you, the teacher, have difficult, difficulties in that moment to uh, handle the class or because there are difficulties difficult to uh, handle, to solve, problems difficult to solve. But, and this is not certainly a positive noise. On the other hand, we have a positive level of sound of noisy sound that is students talking now if you have uh, a game in which students divided into groups are playing together you have at least four five six students talking at the same time in different groups of course this is noisy if this kind of noise i mean if if they are noisy it means they're working so i i would like to say we teachers, we don't need to be afraid of a noisy class if the noise is the result of an active lesson. Inform your colleagues in the other classes so that they know if it is a bit of a noise, there's a bit of a noise, it's under control. And, and uh, if I show my students I enjoy myself when they play, there's no need to say stop two, three, four times. As soon as they say stop now, they stop because they perceive that you are part of the group when you play and they respect you when you say stop. Thank you. So next one. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
this is appropriate nowadays, I would say, especially that we, you know, you are running, or in many countries, they are running uh, online teaching, online lessons. So can you give us more examples, Paolo, of online usage of card games? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I have to uh, share the screen again, if I, if I may, very quickly. I could f use a game that I prepared sure. with my, one, of my, one of my classes, my level, my second class. Oh, if I can manage with that. Okay. Uh, let me have a look. Okay. Uh, I, I think I'm sharing the screen, right? Yes, correct. Can you see my screen? Okay. Let me pick. Uh, if you can read Italian, you can see I wrote here uh, Seconda da Marzo 2021. So it's what I'm doing uh, during uh, lockdown lessons, online lesson from March. So very, very recently. And this is a game, if I can open it, that I devised using uh, cards. Okay, it takes a while to prepare the first and the second slide, then you go. Uh, look, very quickly, you introduce some verbs. This is an online lesson, right? You introduce the verbs. Uh, I devised this game with PowerPoint. It's very easy if you need, uh, uh, I mean, if you want, I can share this game to you if you want to, but using PowerPoint after a while can be very easy. You introduce the words, in this case, the sing, laugh, play, study, watch TV, okay? and and come on okay and now look at this screen and you have half a second to look at the verb look and this is what write it down this is yes sing you got that right thing and what's this laugh yes what's this play Again, you introduce five words like this, and then questions. Look, do you like singing? Yes, I do. No, I don't. Laugh. Do you like laughing? Yes, I do. No, I don't, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, with these cards and PowerPoint, endless possibility. Ooh, Sylvia, who's the color? Light blue, green, yellow, purple, white, black, two the color. Purple. Purple, right. Can you guess the verb? To read. You got it right. With one <laughs> color. So your team won it. Study. Yay. You like studying? Yes. Yes, I do. No, I don't, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is basically very simple to create because what you have to create is actually one slide at of a kind. So basically you create three slides and then you cover, you simply change the picture. Uh, it doesn't take that enormous amount of time and it's online alternative way of using these cards. Okay. Thank you. If you have any Thank more you. questions or uh, not necessarily questions, ideas, come on. I want to talk to you and I want to hear you now, please do. I've got lots of, you know, you know, thank you message uh, and, you know, how, you know, how teachers appreciated your, uh, your presentation with lots of, you know, concrete tips. It was also very funny. So there are lots of comments that, you know. I'm sorry about that. And uh, that you gave them so many ideas. I've only got one last question I would say now that is, uh, <clears throat> I think it's a core question actually, because when you play at school, parents can get the impression that you don't work. So how to manage parents? Ooh, yeah, sure. I think we all experienced that, didn't we? Uh, well, basically, it's a question of reputation. If you, the teacher, study, keep your English updated, and if you reach competence, then most of the parents will know that you are working uh, in a serious way. And at the beginning of the school year, I say, I inform my parents that, yes, uh, I'm going to play a lot with my students, 
I'm going to sing a lot with my students and I introduce them with a very boring presentation just to show them that I can be boring if I want to, that I know exactly what I'm doing. And then uh, simply by telling the parents that you, the teacher, know exactly what you want to do, what you want to achieve, that part, these games are part of the project and you share the project with the parents, then uh, all the problems will vanish, I'm sure. If not, give me the address or me, mail address of these parents and I will drop them a line. Uh, we will drop them a line together, me and you together as a group of teachers. We will teach these parents that playing is incredibly serious. <laughs> Believe me. Thank you. So <clears throat> I've got some greetings okay. from Banu, our distributor actually in, uh, from Iber in Turkey. You probably got in touch. Ah, I believe you met her. Yes, a few I met. Years ago. Yes, yes, I've been to Turkey <laughs> uh, many years ago, and I have wonderful memories of that uh, visit to Turkey and some Turkey words that I learned during my visit there. So thank you. That's <laughs> secure, Erim. Great. So then, you know, I'll leave you with this, you know, another thank you message. So thank you for the enthusiasm and fun presentation. It was engaging and interesting. Thank you for all the great and creative ideas. So I can only say thank you, Paolo, for being so, again, enthusiastic and for, you know, influencing us as well. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to remind to, you know, all the participants um, <clears throat> to go on the website just to download this early language games catalog because it will be good for them to know all our wide range of, um, of games that can actually be used as you saw in classroom, but also for online teaching. And that's it then. So thank you again, Paolo. And we'll probably organize another much, session, Lisa, I would yeah. say. Thank you, thank you all. It will be a pleasure. It will be a pleasure. And I promise I will be serious next time. No. No? <laughs> okay, no, then I can't yes. Do it. We will call you again then. <laughs> Goodbye, okay, everybody. Thank you very much indeed. Goodbye, my pleasure, everybody. my pleasure. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.